Hi, everyone. Welcome to the workshop session of uh, HashKey Group. I'm Emma. I'm the CEO of Long Hash Ventures. We're a portfolio company of HashKey Group. And uh, it's my honor today to host uh, the workshop session with uh, Ben and James. Let me quickly introduce. So Ben is the head of ecosystem for HashKey Group. And James is the CTO for Platum, which is a portfolio company of uh, HashKey Capital. So um, Ben, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Hey everyone, my name is Ben Elbaz. I'm head of ecosystems here at Hashkey Group and uh, excited to share some, some thoughts with you later on in this session. Welcome, Ben. And uh, next, we also have James. Would you like to quickly introduce yourself? My name is James uh, QU from uh, Lock Access Foundation, uh, City of Platon. Uh, very glad to meet you and we'll share more depth <laughs> information with you. Thank you. Thank you, James and Ben. So over the next 45 minutes, we're going to walk you through what is HashKey Group, what are the key pillars of business, and also we're going to do a deep dive into the ecosystem building effort that HashKey is doing in Singapore and beyond, and also understand a bit more about Platon's uh, roadmap and also their plans in Singapore. So let me just provide a quick introduction of HashKey Group. So Hashkey Group is really the International Blockchain Technology Innovation Unit affiliated with Wanshang Blockchain Group. It's a privately owned industrial and financial conglomerates with more than US dollar 20 billion revenue back in 2019. And Wanshang Group's business spanning from industrial solutions such as electric vehicle manufacturing to agriculture and natural resources such as renewable energy infrastructure and to all sorts of financial services covering banking, brokerage, trust, insurance and fund management. It's one of the largest privately owned business in China and uh, it has more than 40,000 employees. And the journey of blockchain for Hashkey Group really started back in 2015. Wenxiang Group is the first to start a non-profit blockchain research lab in Asia. It's also the first to fund a blockchain-focused VC, namely Fenbushi Capital, back in 2015 with US dollar 50 million investment. And fast forward to 2018, um, Hashkey Group was formed with the vision to provide a fully compliant um, group infrastructure to um, cover digital asset service in Pan-Asia area. And the three key pillars of Hashkey Group business includes digital asset market infrastructure, venture capital investment, as well as blockchain technology solutions. Under digital asset market structure, um, they have licensed the brokerage, OTC trading, as well as asset servicing and payment services, such as wallet, um, staking, as well as custody and also investment and research units. And Hashkey Capital is one of the largest licensed asset manager focused on blockchain investment. It has more than US dollar 200 million AUM as of today. And last but not least, blockchain technology development is also being spearing ahead within uh, Hashkey Group. Um, and uh, over the last two, three years, there has been tremendous momentum that has been built across all the industry use cases. As you can see, we've um, identified five key use cases here. Um, the first one is SAB trade and supply chain finance, where there's collaboration between DBS, BAIC, and Wanshan Blockchain Lab. Um, as well as smart city data infrastructure, which is a research effort between MIT and Wenxiang Blockchain Lab, um, all the way to provenance and traceability. And I think Ben, as the head of ecosystem, is going to deep dive into some of the use cases and most excitingly, what are they doing in Singapore? So of course, the Hashkey Group is uh, uh, led by a group of um, blockchain experts as well as finance um, veterans. So Dr. Xiao, who is a vice chairman and executive director of China uh, Wanshang Holding, he's really the founding father of Hashkey and extremely well known in the blockchain um, ecosystem. And Michelle Li, who is the executive president, he has more than 20 years of investment banking experience um, with uh, UBS. And T.F. Chen, who is the head of Singapore and Southeast Asia, he brings more than 20 years of experience in global investment markets as well as asset management from his work with BNP Paribas. 
So without going into details of all the uh, professionals and uh, uh, experienced veterans that uh, Hashki managed to assemble over the last couple of years, um, I hope you have a, a, a relatively good idea about what Hashki is about and what Hashki set out to build. Um, so let me invite Ben to introduce a little bit more about the industry solutions that the Hashkey Group is spearheading. Thanks, thanks, Emma. First off, um, I'd really like to thank the organizers of Singapore FinTech Festival for giving us the opportunity to share uh, Hashkey's collaborative ecosystem vision uh, for our work and focus in Singapore and beyond. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm Ben Elbaz, head of uh, Hashkey's ecosystems group. Prior to leading strategy and ecosystems at Hashkey, uh, I co-founded Stanford University's largest blockchain technology community, and I worked in the technology se uh, sector in Silicon Valley and mainland China for over 10 years. The theme of my talk today is about building collaborative ecosystems. Um, before talking specifically about Hashkey success to date in Singapore, uh, I, I want to share a little bit more about our perspectives on how we think about collaborative ecosystems in Singapore in general. So first off, I think it's helpful to make a distinction between uh, different types of thinking. So um, you know, I think first point is that we really try to take an ecosystem first approach. Um, so what does that actually mean? What is a system? Um, in, in business strategy, it's important to distinguish between you know, two different types of thinking, uh, linear thinking and systems thinking. L linear thinking views business results as being driven by a simple linear flow of cause and effect relationships, something like, you know, I want to grow sales, so I should market to my direct customer. Uh, systems thinking, however, um, you know, thinks thinks about business results as being driven by by feedback loops, um, where uh, you know indirectly connected relationships can can affect each other positively. So something in you know, a situation like um, you know, I want to grow sales, so I should market to a partner of my direct customer, and that partner may in turn relay that information back to my direct customer which will strengthen my relationship to that direct customer as, as a result. Uh, and you can see kind of how those feedback works. I know it's a little bit abstract, but I think it's helpful to start with some of this. Uh, you can see kind of that, those abstract relationships on the right there, which is that you, you can almost think of A, B, and C and these little dots as nodes or, or partners. And sometimes one relationship with one of those partners feeds back into another, into another partner. And the output of that can actually become uh, another input into the system, into our network and make the entire system stronger uh, stronger as a result. So one of the things I think we at Hashkey really try to, um, you know, really try to deliver is when we work on products, when we work on solutions, we work on initiatives, we really try to take an ecosystem first approach because we really believe, we really believe that the, the whole is kind of greater than the sum of its parts. Uh, and how we define uh, that ecosystem kind of in different types of partner, you know, if you look at different partner types here, you know, you've got, uh, you know, we kind of embody systems thinking through, through focusing on, uh, you know, all these different types of partners. You've got uh, universities is, is one key partner, one key, one key partner type. Uh, you know, we have, we're very interested in what's happening in Singapore around the, you know, Asian Institute of Digital Finance and, and talking to those stakeholders. Um, you know, we actively, in, in other jurisdictions like Hong Kong, we actively engage with research universities, uh, you know, guest lectures and different types of case studies. To really, you know, to really, to really try to develop that relationship and and build that as an important node in, in our network. Uh, we also work together with government agencies. What I'll share later on in this presentation is some of our successes to date in working with INDA in Singapore. Um, obviously, financial institutions and investment funds as key sources uh, of capital are an important part uh, of the relationships that we build in our overall network. Um, incubators and accelerators. Uh, uh, stakeholders such as long hash ventures are a very important part of our, of our overall ecosystem because the you know the the raw talent that comes out of some of these uh, some of these projects that get incubated or get accelerated you know could be you know could be candidates for for follow on investment from our venture fund or they could be candidates to partner together with us on some of our corporate um, you know corporate initiatives or government programs uh, obviously technology companies companies like Weinstein blockchain uh, LatticeX, ITOS, and a number of these different stakeholders I'll talk about in this uh, in this presentation are all very key to you know kind of delivering a, an ecosystem approach. Industry associations we're also very active in. Uh, we think that a lot of the output that comes from industry associations, whether it's conversations on uh, regulatory consultation papers or you know uh, you know frequent frequent meetups offline or, or, or online, we think are very conducive to a number of different discussions and thoughts can, that can stimulate. You know potential business opportunities. Uh, we're active members in the Blockchain Association of Singapore, 
uh, members of the Singapore FinTech Association. Uh, we're also one of the founding members of, of Open Nodes together with Winesound Blockchain. Uh, corporate Innovation Labs um, are another area that we're very, you know, very, very focused on. Uh, you know, a recent proposal project that we announced as a winner in Hong Kong was actually a project that was uh, was proposed uh, together with the BIS Innovation uh, Innovation Lab out of Hong Kong. And obviously, startups are, are an essential part of, of, of any ecosystem. Uh, and, and looking at like this, this slide just gives you kind of a small slice of a, of a broader ecosystem. Uh, and, and I think one important part to, to think about here is that our wider ecosystem is really brought together in partnership with, with Winesound Blockchain, which is, as Emma mentioned, uh, is one of, one of mainland China's earliest and, and leading developers of blockchain technology solutions. Um, Hashkey's ecosystem is strongly supported by its partnership with, with our sister company, Winesound Blockchain. Uh, through this partnership, our ecosystem spans a wide range of corporate partners, blockchain technology portfolio companies, industry associations, fintech companies, and university programs. Uh, as I mentioned before, in Singapore, we're active members of the Singapore Fintech Association, the Blockchain Association of Singapore, and founding members of Open Nodes. Uh, and one thing to note, you know, when you look at a uh, an ecosystem map like this, is that, as I mentioned earlier in my uh, earlier in this presentation. In some cases, these could be these could be direct partnerships. So, on a particular project, we could you know, directly work with one of these uh, one of these companies uh, to deliver deliver a solution. Or some of these could be indirect partners. So, you know, like like an association or a relationship with with another partner when you're really serving you know another direct entity uh, as part of as part of a business engagement. So, we really look at kind of the extent of our relationships, our ecosystem as a combination of both direct partners and indirect partners. Uh, as, as Emma mentioned previously, right, and just reinforcing what we do, there's really three pillars of our business. Um, one pillar is blockchain technology solutions, which we work together in partnership with Winesound Blockchain and other portfolio companies. Uh, digital asset market infrastructure, we're currently applying for a number of different financial services licenses in Japan, Hong Kong, and in Singapore. And, and obviously the venture investment arm of our company, which is run by Hashkey Capital. The next part of my presentation will focus on our vision in Singapore and, and beyond. So one, one important thing to, to keep in mind is that our, our vision is really a technology driven vision. Um, and essentially in Singapore and beyond into the ASEAN region, we're focused on catalyzing the next generation of digital transformation by integrating blockchain technology and other emerging data technologies deeper into industry and finance. Um, Essentially, this involves leveraging our relationships in the industrial economy and financial and the financial sector together with internal with, together with our internal capabilities and our external partners uh, to combine blockchain, AI, uh, IoT, and applied cryptography to help drive the next generation of digital transformation. Uh, so, for example, right in, in Singapore, we plan to work more closely with partners like like James from from LatticeX, uh, you know, a leading privacy preserving computation developer. Uh, ITOS, which is a leading blockchain and IoT, you know, telecom solutions provider, uh, DataYes, an AI fintech company, uh, All in Pay, which is a leading payments fintech company, uh, and of course our sister company, Winesound Blockchain, uh, to deliver leading digital transformation solutions that connect finance and industry together uh, in more efficient data-enabled ways. Uh, and as you look at this slide, right, I think one important takeaway is that, you know, traditionally, if you look at a lot of what's been said about uh, you know, digital transformation and, and, and the new data economies is there's always a lot of talk in the mainstream media uh, and, you know, and, and mainstream business literature about, about AI, uh, you know, about, um, you know, about utilizing AI to, in, in machine learning to create insights from a massive amount of data. Uh, and of course, a lot of people have been talking about IoT for many, many years, right? The ability to put sensors and devices on the ground and, and source a lot of data. Um, and you know those are kind of seen as two important pillars, right? You've got IoT and, and AI as really important pillars of, of the next generation of data data economy. Um, but what doesn't get talked about as much is what role blockchain can play in you know in the next generation of, of these data economies. Uh, and that's an area where you know we've been thinking a lot about. It's also an area that that James and, and Platon and LatticeX have been thinking a lot about, which is that you know essentially blockchain is a technology that enables you to have trust and, and maintain trust over the, the data that's been sourced into, uh, into, into your database, right? And um, in different, uh, you know, in contrast to how, how it's traditionally been done, right? If you look at the kind of the traditional model of a big data platform, essentially you have one large platform who everyone has to trust. 
you know, they, they put, you know, they either put all these devices out in the field or they acquire that data from, from some third party. They're the ones who deploy a lot of the AI algorithms in the cloud. And they're kind of the, the maintainer of that, uh, of that database. Uh, and if you use it, you kind of have to trust that. Essentially, you know, blockchain kind of, um, you know, it kind of changes, changes the rules a little bit where, you know, each participant or, or stakeholder in that, in that network actually has responsibility for, for maintaining uh, a copy of that, a copy of that database. Right. And, um, you know, you basically have shared responsibility for, you know, for, for that data. So I think from our perspective, we really see the, the combination of blockchain, AI, and, and IoT as really essential to kind of creating new opportunities for, uh, you know, for digital transformation in both, in both industrial use cases and, and financial services use cases. Uh, and in, in applied cryptography, that's basically referring to uh, privacy preserving computation, which is an area of interest that we have, uh, which James, I'm sure, will share a lot more, a lot more detail on. As we look at our uh, focal points in Singapore and beyond, uh, I say, you know, we summarize it in three, three areas I think, are, I think is very, very helpful. Uh, you know, the first area of focus that we have is we wanna support uh, Singapore government-driven initiatives with our private sector expertise. Uh, to date, we have successfully delivered as development partners with IMDA on, on trade trust. Um, and we seek to continue collaboration with other government agencies in, in Singapore. And I'll share a little bit about, more about that project in, in a few slides. Um, additionally, what we wanna do is we wanna drive deeper collaboration of our overall group ecosystem of companies in, in Singapore. So we want to help uh, bring uh, more of our partner companies into Singapore. Uh, and those are companies across IoT, payments, blockchain, privacy preserving computation, and AI into Singapore and, and beyond. Uh, and thirdly, together with our partners, we want to work to land innovative blockchain-based business models into Singapore, and then also use Singapore as a springboard into the greater ASEAN region. Um, in addition to kind of our normal digital assets business, we're also working to land uh, blockchain business applications in Singapore and beyond. Uh, to date, we've been working on two specific verticals, supply chain and trade finance, and then also targeted consumer marketing, which I will talk about individually uh, in future slides. Uh, one thing that Emma mentioned uh, earlier on is that earlier this year, uh, Hashq was announced as a winner of IMDA's 2020 Blockchain Challenge. And essentially, um, we've been supporting IMDA with integration of uh, their trade trust framework into uh, our supply chain finance platform. So a good summary of what this, uh, what this overall project is, is we're basically using blockchain technology to support the interoperability between different supply chain and trade finance platforms uh, using, using this trade trust framework. Uh, and I have a slide following this that, that kind of discusses a little bit, a little bit more about that. And essentially trade trust is uh, you know, an IMDA developed blockchain-based trade document notarization framework. Uh, the goals of this project together with IMDA and working on trade trust were essentially fourfold. One is that we wanted to gain experience using trade trust framework and then provide IMDA with, with feedback about you know, tech, um, technically what worked, what could be improved, those types of things. Um, second, second of all, we wanted to demonstrate how an independent entity, think of someone like a financial institution or investor, could take a file that was generated from this framework um, you know, from within any type of supply chain and trade finance platform, and then take that file and verify it, verifying it using tradetrust.io, uh, which is, you know, kind of a uh, positioned as an independent verifier. Um, third, we wanted to get feedback from industry partners on the practicalities of using the trade trust tool. And fourth, we wanted to expand awareness of trade trust through, through our ecosystem, which we've done uh, through a, a follow-up proposal that we, that we were successfully, um, you know, successfully awarded uh, by, by the HKMA in, in Hong Kong. Uh, you know, another area, so, so IMDA has also been very, very helpful in, um, in, in encouraging and inviting us to, to exhibit at different, um, you know, different events. This is just a, an example of, uh, of us exhibiting at the Asian ASEAN Expo in 2020, uh, thanks to IMDA for support on that. In terms of how the trade trust framework actually works and how it gets integrated into a you know, supply chain finance platform or a trade finance platform, it's relatively simple. So if you look at the left here, you can see that uh, essentially this is, a this is a framework that gets deployed on a public blockchain. Uh, the way the trade trust framework works is it's essentially focused on um, you know, taking two types of documents. Those could be verifiable documents or transferable documents and creating a record of them uh, on the blockchain and also be able to process transfers of those uh, of those records. So for something simple, so if you look on the on the on the left side, verifiable documents, those are trade documents like invoices, you know, sales purchase orders or certificates, 
those are relatively simple because these are just these are just contracts. Uh, they're not they're not title. They're not uh, documents of title. Um, so you know, Trade Trust basically uh, you know it delivers a you know, it delivers a framework where you can kind of take those and, and notarize them and create a record of them uh, attached to your identity on on a public blockchain. On the right side, that's actually the transferable document uh, side. That's where you know IMDA really put a lot of effort into thinking about how can you create a blockchain based um, smart contract mediated way to to transfer documents of title. So documents of title and trade include things like bills of lading, warehouse receipts, bills of exchange, and, and things like that. You know how could you do that in a way that could be compliant with some type of international internationally recognized um, standard. Uh, and the internationally recognized standard that IMDA chose is something called the UN Model Law on Electronic Transferable Transferable Records, uh, which is pretty exciting, right? That you think that you can take a model, model model law like that, you take the you take the legal logic, and then you kind of build a smart contract around it. Uh, so it's pretty exciting what what's been done there. And you can kind of take this framework as a software; it's delivered as an open source software framework, and you can you can kind of integrate the core functionalities, things like generating files, which can be verified independently. Uh, you can you can take these the software library and integrate it into any platform, and that's that's essentially what we did within uh, within an existing supply chain financing platform that we have. Uh, and on the right here, you can kind of see the the intent that IMDA had in creating a platform like this is that they really wanted to leverage public blockchains as a way to enable uh, better interoperability between digital islands. Um, so you can see a digital island is basically kind of like a, a walled garden where a trade finance might have certain users and you know, a certain amount of data is, is collected within that. But what happens when a user wants to go from, from one platform to the other platform? Well, if there was a, a way for, for data to be shared on some type of common, common platform or a common data layer, that could enable uh, platform users to, you know, to, do, to do activities that are cross-platform. It could enable you know, non-platform users to, to verify certain data that was, uh, that was generated on that, on that platform. So essentially, you know, IMDA as a government regulator is really focused on how do we break down kind of the islands between a number of these different commercial platforms uh, so that it's easier for participants in the market to, to collaborate and interoperate between each other. And overall, you know, this work on trade trust uh, and the great results that we were able to achieve from our integration of trade trust, it really draws on our foundation in, in mainland China. And um, you know, back in, I believe it was 2018 or so, you know, we started to, you know, work together, you know, work together with some, some key partners, DBS, BI, BAIC group, work together on an application of blockchain in the automotive logistics industry. So essentially, this was just the use of blockchain to, to be a, a, you know, kind of a digital notary for, for invoices that are, that are generated by, by subcontractors in, you know, in the logistics value chain. Uh, and the key, you know, the key reason, the key benefit of doing that was essentially you know, and in most in most industries, when I, you know, when I, um, you know, when there's a transaction between a buyer and seller, the buyer doesn't necessarily pay up front. The buyer, the buyer might pay after 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, whatever. Uh, so, the, so the seller is, is left holding accounts receivables. So it's a pretty active market. Uh, there's a pretty active uh, financial industry called receivables financing, where you know where these guys will sell their receivables, you know, factoring and discounting to to a third party. The key issue is how do you verify the invoices that are the, the underlying for that type of financial transaction? Um, so, you know, before before we worked in this engagement, there was a lot of questions around risks of fraud. And essentially the, the role of blockchain is to is to kind of make it reduce the cost of verification and reduce the potential for fraud uh, because the you know the invoices, the data is kind of stored, stored on blockchain to, to begin with. Another project that we're working on in, in Singapore, uh, interested to land, is something we call decentralized commerce, which is a data private, uh, decentralized consumer loyalty network. Uh, essentially, this is a uh, platform that focuses on bringing together consumers and merchants uh, in a platform where uh, you know consumers' data is is private by by default. Uh, at the same time, enables merchants to uh, to query information about consumers without. Uh, without allowing a platform in the middle to actually get information about that consumer's private private data, um, so this is a project that we are you know we've been act we have been in active talks with with regulators uh, locally to to discuss and you know we've been active conversations with partners to discuss and it's just an example of how we are looking to apply you know uh, you know a unique we're looking to land a unique business model around blockchain in Singapore and, and launch it from there. This slide is just essentially a summary of you know when we think about you know adding blockchain and digital assets to the data economy you know how do we think about the benefits of, of the technology you know quite simple um, but always always helpful to summarize right I think the key features that we look at uh, in terms of blockchain and how it's applied is creates tamper-proof records 
uh, you know, you've got the decentralization feature, you've got the ability to process real-time settlement of assets for payments. And then the key benefits that arise obviously are, are enhanced data security, the, the auditability, the, the fraud protection and, and, and things like that. Uh, you know, I think one thing that's overlooked many times is the, the ability for, for blockchain to serve as kind of the facilitator of collective responsibility for data. So blockchain essentially as a distributed database, you know, you, you, you kind of uh, put the responsibility to, to read and write that data. You put the responsibility to write certain data to the, to the database, not on one party, but on a distributed network of, of, of stakeholders. So that could be, that, that's the very important functionality for something like a value chain or supply chain where, you know, it might be multiple parties who need to you know, confirm that something has happened rather than just one, one party. Uh, and then obviously for digital assets, when we think about that, they, you know, they create, you know, some key features there, you know, you've got the incentive features, you've got the, the tradability of digital assets. Uh, and, and, you know, at the end of the day, the, the value that, that those two features bring is the, the ability to, to incentivize early participants in a network, but then also to, you know, to unlock liquidity for assets and create new markets. So to end, uh, you know, I'll just summarize a few, few key points that I hope you can take away from, from this presentation about our ecosystem efforts in Singapore and beyond. One is that our work in Singapore and beyond is actually part of a larger ecosystem-wide effort to align with local government initiatives on the ground uh, and land innovative new business models into Singapore and the ASEAN region. Second, we are building a collaborative ecosystem that can help drive the next generation of digital transformation. And lastly, you know, we hope that this digital transformation will connect blockchain technology together with AI, uh, IoT, and privacy-preserving computation to allow for more innovation in financial services applied to industrial sectors. So with that, I end. And you know, thank you for everyone for tuning in. I look forward to continuing this conversation in the future. Thanks. Thank you, Ben. That was a very comprehensive uh, summary and presentation of all the ecosystem building effort of HashQ Group in Singapore and beyond, and particularly around the industry solution uh, works and uh, also the type of work we're doing with Singapore government. And I think that really demonstrates the um, focus we have and also the, the dedication we have for Singapore wider ecosystem. Thank you so much, Ben. Next up, I want to invite James, who is the CTO of uh, Platon. And James, it's great to have you here. And we would love to use the opportunity to deep dive into what uh, Platon is and uh, what are the plans for Platon in Singapore? Yeah, thank you, Emma. So this is James Q from uh, LatexS Foundation, uh, CTO of Platon. I will quickly share with you uh, what we are doing and uh, how we try to contribute to uh, Singapore uh, digital economy. Uh, so this is the... Uh, the Platon's, we call it the power of ideology. It's an infrastructure for privacy preserving computation uh, and distributed economy. Uh, so we are more focusing on the fundamental infrastructure rather than the application. Uh, but after said that, we, we do pick up certain unique and a typical uh, use case or typical uh, uh, scenario, a typical situation and get the project done in a full life cycle uh, to enrich the uh, fundamental function support. Uh, so let me move on. Uh, here is the Platon's vision. Uh, there are many of them. I won't go through it one by one. Uh, so the number one is the common infrastructure for data circulation and collaborative computation. Uh, so make data circulate with value and collaborate with with value and produce even new value, it requires how we use the data. Uh, and the fundamental one will be the cryptograph algorithm, how to protect the data, how to get the data uh, uh, used use and protected. Uh, so there will be the ownership transfer between owners and there will be the usage uh, transfer between uh, customers. Uh, so Briefly, uh, let's see the, uh, of the decentralization versus the traditional one. So I will go quickly uh, skip this one. So this is the digital age privacy computation. as a problem we are facing, right? One is the personal privacy versus the surveillance and the transaction privacy versus validation and the data privacy versus uh, collaboration. So we are trying to solve this uh, stuff with our deep dive into the crypto 
uh, graphic area. For example, this uh, data privacy versus collaboration, uh, we apply this multi-party computation uh, into this industry. Uh, so the blockchain will be the uh, uh, settlement and clearing framework uh, and the cryptograph algorithm will be the key core technology to protect data. Uh, and we do have a couple of like production uh, uh, ready for this one. For the transparency versus validation, we have this uh, HEE and zero knowledge proof. Uh, kind of, uh, uh, zero knowledge proof is, is uh, almost mature. It's kind of mature in this uh, blockchain industry already. Uh, so our understanding of this uh, uh, the data is to how to collect data, how to store data, and how to compute data, and how to uh, really use it to generate a new value. So this is where, where Platon is, uh, and how to collect data is more on the IoT side. Uh, actually, all of this need to connect it and combine it together. Uh, that's why we are in, uh, kind of cooperating with all these parties uh, to build up, for example, on the data collecting side, you know, we build up the digital ID uh, within the IoT equipment. So from the data source, it will be safe, secure, and trust. Uh, so that's the, the whole, like our understanding of the infrastructure uh, system of the digital economy. Uh, it could apply to uh, the banking, financial industry, uh, and this uh, uh, data service consulting, uh, and the middle and background business system, uh, and all other kind of infrastructure. Uh, so, so we are working on to try to we are working on the uh, kind of infrastructure. Try to provide the capability to uh, to the whole kind of uh, industry to help the ecosystem grow. Uh, this is the, our three kind of three is almost a good number. <laughs> this is a three pillar into uh, of the uh, Platon uh, infrastructure. In the center is the, uh, the Platon uh, platform. It's a decentralized economy and network. So there will be a, a data market uh, and evaluation institutions uh, ecosystem on top of it, so uh, so all of this is could, it has to be verifiable computation. So if you have done something and it cannot be verified, so how to prove it? Uh, how to make it trustable? Uh, trustworthy. So it's a, it's a verifiable computation. It, it will be the crucial uh, key part to make the digital became an asset. Only after the data became a digital asset, then this uh, management platform and eventually the blockchain as the uh, clearing settlement uh, platform will be really helpful. Uh, we are spending a lot of efforts on this AI infrastructure as well. Uh, of course, it's the infrastructure is the fundamental uh, stuff. Uh, try to enable how to cooperate uh, between different data islands and uh, protected by the uh, cryptography algorithm, how to generate new value uh, and based on the uh, existing AI methodology. So we do have a, a Rosetta framework uh, published, uh, uh, I think already six months back uh, or more than six months, uh, I forgot the exact date. So you could easily to code a uh, TensorFlow based AI uh, solution and change it into a, a privacy preserved data AI solution. Uh, so this is our privacy AI framework. So there, will, there will be protocol defined, there will be application level, there will be algorithm. So on the algorithm, uh, we, are, we were working, as I mentioned before, there are multi-party computation, uh, zero knowledge proof, HE, uh, this a proxy re-encryption, et cetera, et cetera. So all of this are, this, uh, are, the, are the crucial key part we are uh, providing the, the capability. And on top of it, uh, based on this uh, MPC, we do have a key shard uh, product. Uh, the product is aimed to 
to build up a protocol of key management system. Uh, uh, and everyone, I think, must be aware of this in the digital world. For data, if you want to clarify the, the, uh, the digital ownership, uh, the usage, etc., the ID is crucial. So how to really build up a, a distributed or decentralized ID protocol is another crucial part. Uh, so we are also building this up. Uh, we have a draft version running already. Uh, so on the on the uh, very bottom, to make this uh, cryptography algorithm running in a good response time, be user friendly, uh, will can be accepted by real business flow. The speed is very very key. So we are also doing this uh, hardware kind of. Uh, 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 enhancement to speed up the uh, algorithm. Okay. So this is, the, uh, as I mentioned, the Platon ID protocol. Uh, so we are working on. Uh, for for those who has interest, well, we can work with your team, your group, uh, all together to get this one done more properly and more kind of uh, customized for uh, your scenario, your use case. Uh, here's the Keyshard framework uh, I have mentioned. Uh, it's already live for a couple of, like, uh, uh, already uh, live for years. So, uh, so here I, I want to share with you the Platon core uh, competency. So why Platon is good? We spend a lot of time on the uh, very core part. For example, here you saw the, the Geese card name here. It actually, it, it is the uh, uh, BFT, the Byzantine Fault Tolerant Consensus Mechanism. Uh, it's it's generated from the uh, practical Byzantine Fault Tolerance combined with uh, with, for example, the the, the uh, hot stuff. All this kind of brand new consensus algorithm. So we innovated a brand new one. Uh, it's a concurrent. Uh, consensus algorithm running very fast, uh, plus the uh, VRF, uh, the random uh, support algorithm. All of this fo formed the fundamental core part of Platon. Uh, so to have an uh, experience how fast it is and how uh, how good it is, uh, I would recommend you to visit our, uh, for example, here. Uh, our I will show you one uh, one stuff. Uh, yeah, this this. Let me. So recently, we we put uh, live with the uh, uh, sandbox we call Alaya. Uh, so Alaya is based on exactly same technology of Platon, or same binary, or same logic, uh, and it's running. Globally, so we have plenty of this uh, uh, globally distributed validators, uh, and there there will be a uh, uh, this uh, we call the Geese card consensus algorithm and the VRF, all of this uh, hot technology running there, uh, and we have this uh, you can see it like uh, this uh, uh, the live block. Producing who is a producer, etc., and the uh, transactions, etc. Uh, so Alaya is actually is a sandbox for Platon. Uh, we use Alaya to uh, verify all potentials of Platon. So we provide the fundamental cryptograph uh, capability and the uh, blockchains centralized, uh, the distributed uh, clearing and settlement capability and get the community to make lots of like a dApps on top of it uh, and get it get ready for the real business so this is the this is a place uh, for developers who has interest uh, can take a look uh, so so for platon actually uh, this this is where we we are focusing on so this is our mission just want to 
to repeat this a bit. So being, being a financial infrastructure, uh, blockchain is way qualified to provide a function of clearing a settlement that consolidates multiple IDs, accounts, corporates, and even industries. So we're trying to build up is the infrastructure. So regarding the, uh, uh, what we want to do in Singapore, actually we are working with a couple like a Singapore corporation doing this consulting service to, to them uh, to analyze how complicated their uh, real business is and where we could put the smart contract uh, into their, uh, to automate their business, to make it more efficient how to control uh, to make sure the original data source uh, are good and can be trusted and then how to make the uh, uh, life cycle of their products more automated and to reduce the cost etc that's on the uh, supply chain side and on the financial side we are uh, working with a couple of like institutes uh, try to, uh, to work on the how to use this uh, uh, for example, privacy preserving, uh, crypto technology, uh, how to protect data, uh, how to be kind of a regulation safe uh, solution based on a cryptograph and a blockchain. And back on this, uh, uh, so all of this actually are all sponsored by LatexS Foundation. So the very important one I want to highlight is LaTeX Foundation is in Singapore. So that's our root of our whole ecosystem. Uh, so we kind of LaTeX, there is a pioneer plan and there is a facilitator plan. Uh, so we are supporting uh, all kinds of good uh, technical uh, breakthroughs, which could help the ecosystem, could help uh, to build up brand new solution for the traditional industry uh, or even a brand brand new kind of a, a business chance uh, so uh, we are really re really looking forward to cooperate with all community developers uh, and industry experts uh, to combine this uh, blockchain and crypto graphic algorithms and AI models, all these three together to make your business, our economy, uh, or our ecosystem grow to the next stage. Uh, so uh, for, for, for those who have this uh, uh, interest or has a capability, please visit our uh, website. Uh, so we are looking forward to see you, to work with you, uh, to work together, to build up the, uh, uh, to make the future uh, better. So Emma, back to you. Thank you, James, for the comprehensive introduction about uh, Platon Alaya and also Latex X Foundation. And uh, uh, definitely Singapore being the center of uh, financial institutions mm -hmm. and also um, emerging fintech, I think there will be a lot of potential partners that can benefit from the privacy preserving technology you guys are developing. So definitely encourage potential partners to uh, reach out to James if you're interested. And uh, having said that, Thank you, James, um, very much. Thank you, Ben. Uh, that comes to the end of the workshop session. I hope you have uh, enjoyed and have a better understanding of HashKey, our ecosystem building effort in Singapore, as well as Platon. We'll see you next year.